Which way is it going? Hey, we need to move. We need to move. Oh, my goodness. Look at how big that tornado is. That is a giant tornado. Look, there's two more over here. That's no radius. I have a uh, half mile wide tornado on the ground. Looked up above us, there's a white squirrel just starting down. We hauled it for the shop, hauled a tornado. It just happened. I mean, just wham, there it was. Watch faster. Watch faster, Greg. Checking it. You got to go, buddy. The tornado the most violent wind on earth. One of the deadliest forces of nature. Tornado Alert. What you need to know. A program about some of the most violent acts of nature and how to survive them. Hello, I'm Troy Dungan. For more than 30 years, I've been forecasting weather in the heart of tornado country. Over the next hour, you'll see some of the most dramatic footage ever taken of tornadoes and the devastation they leave behind. Many of these pictures were taken by people just like you with home video cameras. You'll see where tornadoes are most likely to strike and learn what to watch for in the sky when conditions are right for tornadoes to form. We'll take a look at the cutting edge of scientific research on tornadoes. We'll see the new forecasting technology that warns us of tornadoes better than ever before. We'll show you what you and your family should do to protect yourselves at home. Tips that can save your life. We'll also clear up some misconceptions about tornadoes, so you'll want to stay tuned. Tornado Alert. What you need to know is made possible in part by Phillips Petroleum, the performance company, and by Central and Southwest Corporation, an energy company for today and tomorrow. As a television weather forecaster, I've seen tornadoes born, it seems, out of nothing. One moment, it appears to be a normal thunderstorm forming. Then, suddenly, in seconds, a churning funnel dips out of the sky with winds sometimes exceeding 300 miles per hour. It destroys homes and buildings, tossing huge trucks and girders like toys, and leaving others untouched, all in a matter of seconds. Tornadoes can last only moments, or they can stay on the ground for hours. They come in all shapes and sizes, long and thin, or as wide as a mile. There's no place totally safe from tornadoes. They've struck in all 50 states. But here, if we look at this map, we can see that they occur in this area more than any other. We call it Tornado Alley. It cuts right through the heart of the United States, from Texas up to the Great Plains to the upper Midwest. Here's why. In the spring, warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico moves northward and meets warm, dry air from the west and cool, dry air from Canada. It's on this border of colliding air masses that tornadoes are born. Nationwide, about a 1,000 tornadoes a year are reported. Over the last four years, tornadoes have killed an average of about 40 people a year and done about $500 million a year in damage. But there's really no predicting what tornadoes are going to do from one year to the next. The deadliest outbreak of tornadoes in this century occurred on March 18, 1925. In fact, it was one of the worst catastrophes in American history. For three hours, a single storm tore a path more than 200 miles across Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. The same system spawned tornadoes in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama. In all, 792 people lost their lives. April 3rd and 4th, 1974, 148 tornadoes broke out across Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Ohio. 350 people died. Damage was in the hundreds of millions of dollars. It was just a big war, and I, I don't know. It was just terrible. I'd say four or five minutes, it was all over. We were laughing and joking about it with a big, you know, big storm, and then we happened to come over on the campus. And uh, the scene was real frightening. You know, it was a chaotic scene. Everyone was just astonished. No one could believe what had happened. The whole campus was devastated. 
April 10th, 1979, a photographer captured a dark, ominous tornado tearing across Texas farmland. It approached Wichita Falls as a hailstorm and hit the city hard as a tornado. Over 40 people were killed and 3,000 homes were destroyed. And more recently, in 1987, a tornado bore down on the little West Texas town of Zaragoza, killing 30 people and destroying every home in the community. The deadliest tornado of 1993 struck Tulsa, Oklahoma on a Saturday afternoon late in April. The storm hit suddenly, and within minutes, the damage was done. Hundreds of people lost their homes. Scores were injured. And seven people lost their lives. Early that afternoon, storm clouds had yet to form over Tulsa, but weather forecasters saw something approaching. 1.30 Central Time, the National Weather Service office in Tulsa issues a storm outlook for eastern Oklahoma. Forecasters report a moderate risk of severe thunderstorms, but note isolated tornadoes also possible. 250 miles away in Kansas City, other eyes are watching Oklahoma. Uh, we have two areas that we're looking at today. The, uh, this is the National Severe Storms Forecast Center. Uh, with, with some very warm air at 850 millibars. Uh, Here, forecasters monitor potentially severe thunderstorms across the United States. Severe, yeah. Primarily damaging winds and maybe some large hail. And uh, so we'll get this out here then shortly. If forecasters here believe that severe weather will form, they will issue a watch. 3.16 p.m., Jim Henderson, Deputy Director of the Severe Storm Center, issues a bulletin. A tornado watch for central and east central Oklahoma. Uh, watch means exactly that. Watch out. Uh, if conditions are right for tornadic activity. And, and so we felt that uh, by putting this out, you know, Saturday afternoon, you've got a lot of recreational boaters, you've got campers, you've got people that are off not doing their normal thing. So it behooves us to be uh, out a little bit early with those kinds of situations so that uh, any type of mass uh, news dissemination can get out to the most uh, uh, vast audience. Tulsa TV forecaster Jim Giles hears word of the tornado watch and decides to come in on this Saturday afternoon should severe weather develop. Well, we were concerned about the situation because we had a very strong upper level system that gave it a lot of support for severe weather. Giles takes advantage of his station's Doppler radar system. It's picking up signs of the approaching storm and the real danger sign, high speed winds moving in rotation. 6 p.m. With a tornado watch still in effect, the Tulsa Weather Service office puts out a severe thunderstorm warning, but still no tornado warning. And it's, you can see it, it, it literally... At the television station, the Doppler radar is also showing rotation. Green represents wind moving toward the radar, red away from it. And we could see that the storm was starting to rotate. We were getting large hail reports. We were then telling the people that a severe storm, in fact, was moving towards the city of Tulsa, and we should be ready for that. This is a Doppler 6 weather update. Good afternoon, friends. Meteorologist Jim Giles here. Just been outside the doors in our downtown studios, and we're seeing rotation pretty much over downtown. Let's take a look at Doppler 6 radar. Now, there are no tornado warnings out for the area, but let me show you the intensity. The reds and pinks are up to 50 miles per hour away from the radar. The greens are towards the radar. So we're seeing some very good rotation right over here in downtown Tulsa. As the 6.30 rolls around, the storm starts pushing into the downtown section of Tulsa. At 6.30, we ran outside the studio, and you can really see the wall cloud directly over the studio in the downtown parts of the city. We run in, go on the air, and tell people that the storm is definitely re rotating. Giles uses the station's Doppler radar to forecast where the storm is headed. Now, the rotation is very broad, so let's do a Doppler 6 Pathfinder on this rotation, pretty much center over the downtown part of Tulsa. We're moving this off to about the east-northeast at about 25 miles per hour. That's the direction of this rotation as it heads on north of Broken Arrow and over towards the Catoosa area. 
Roger Edwards, a forecaster from Kansas City, has taken the day off to chase this storm across Oklahoma. He shoots video of the developing storm straight ahead of it. I was driving east on I-44 near the junction of 244 in northeast Tulsa, and I got behind the storm some, but I saw the uh, rain wrapping around the backside of the Memphis Cyclone, the apparent circulation of the tornado to my east, over the interstate. I could not see the tornado inside. The warning was out. I knew there was one in there, but I couldn't see it. Back at the TV studio, Jim Giles uses his station's Doppler radar not only to pinpoint the tornado, but to predict specifically where the tornado will hit and when. Forecasting accuracy that would have been impossible a few years ago before Doppler technology became available. 36th Street North and 145th East, that rotation could get there, the leading edge of it at 651. Pine and 145th East at 651, Tiger at 652, Pine and 177th East at 654, Catusa, 658, about 7 o'clock in the uh, Verdigree area. A heavy core here. We're in a heavy core. As the storm nears Catusa, just east of Tulsa, the tornado is invisible, obscured by the rain and hail of the massive thunderstorm. When the tornado was in front of me, I could not see it. It was completely wrapped in rain. What I saw were rain curtains moving toward the south at a fast rate across the road. And uh, shortly after that, the brake lights up ahead due to the car stopped because of the damage from the tornado. To the untrained eye, this tornado might appear to be just a very strong rainstorm. But the radio in Roger Edwards' car is letting him know there's a tornado in that thunderstorm, and it's time to take precautions. Now, this brings us to our first survival tip. To protect yourself and your family, tune in to your local television or radio stations as soon as you notice threatening weather. The information they have could mean the difference between life or death. And be familiar with the terminology. A tornado watch means conditions are favorable for the development of tornadoes. It doesn't mean a tornado's been sighted, but it does mean that one could happen. It means watch out. A tornado warning means a tornado has been sighted or that a tornado is imminent. It means act now, take cover. It's always a good idea to have a weather radio in your house. If there's a tornado warning or watch, it will alert you. The key is to pay attention to what's being broadcast when the weather looks dangerous. It could save your life. Just as the television station's Doppler has predicted, the storm hits Catusa, just east of Tulsa, at two minutes till seven. The tornado was plowed into an interstate highway on a Saturday evening, hitting the most vulnerable, people and cars, perhaps unaware of the power of the storm into which they were driving. Just stay where you are, ma'am. Just concentrate on breathing deep. We're going to get help as quick as we can. And he's real warm. Good afternoon, friends. Meteorologist Jim Giles here. We do have some serious damage from a tornado on the east side of Tulsa. We've been keeping you apprised of that. Some serious damage. I think we have Steve Schroeder in the field. Uh, Steve, where are you at? Hi, Jim. Right now I'm at 193rd and I-44. There are 18-wheelers on their side. We witnessed one 18-wheeler on top of a car. Uh, the damage is just uh, very extensive. The tornado has blown cars and 18-wheeler trucks, in some cases hundreds of feet, and has ripped through heavy metal buildings as if they were made of paper. The tornado has borne in on the little town of Catusa, knocking down trees like toothpicks and smashing houses and trailer homes to nothing. Seven people died horrible, violent deaths, most along freeways, in cars, where they were helpless against the powerful wind. We run down there, looked around, run back up, looked around, looked up above it, there's a white swirl, just started down. We hauled it for the shop, hollered tornado. Bailed off the shop, actually, way no bricks is a flying in it, the rumbling like freight training. I think the one that broke his ribs hit me in the back, busted one of mine and got him. Sucked the watch right off my arm, my hat. All totaled seven dead, 100 injured, hundreds homeless, millions of dollars in damage. 
the community shredded by one of the most powerful forces of nature. It was just five minutes after the warning that the tornado hit cars on the interstate, 13 minutes before it hit the truck stop. Some people heard sirens, but others in their cars were presumably unaware. The people were, were caught as this tornado rolled right down the highway. Many of them jumped out into ditches. They were spared. Others were caught in their cars where they couldn't see the tornado. Many fatalities at that point. The Tulsa tornado brings home the importance of our second survival tip. If you're in a car as a tornado approaches, get out of the car. Most of the people killed in the Tulsa tornado were in their cars. A car is a very unsafe place to be when a tornado hits. A tornado can roll a car over like a tumbleweed. So if you're driving and a tornado is imminent, get out of your car and take cover next to the sturdiest structure available. If possible, take shelter under an overpass. If there's no overpass nearby, lie in a ditch. Get low and next to something solid. If there's absolutely no shelter or cover nearby, go to the lowest spot you can find and get on the ground, covering your head with your arms. Now, here's some remarkable footage taken by someone who encountered a tornado while driving down the highway. Keep going there, keep going. A Wichita, Kansas TV news crew was out doing a news story one day. Watch faster, watch faster. The crew was on a Kansas turnpike when they spotted this tornado out the window. Watch faster, Greg, checking it. You gotta go, buddy. At first, they tried to outrun it, but realized it was gaining on them. So they parked next to a highway overpass, and along with some other motorists, sought shelter there. As it turned out, just in time. Get up under the girders. Is that where you want to go? Yes. Never try to outrun a tornado. The average tornado travels at about 35 miles per hour, but they've been clocked at 60 to 65 miles per hour. Or they can hover, not moving at all. But the point is, you're not going to know. You can't predict with certainty which way it will go, and you simply cannot assume you can outrun it. Now, let's take a closer look at that footage from under the bridge. This dark spot looks like a bit of flying debris, but it's actually a minivan. The tornado has pulled it off the highway and is tumbling and tossing it around. The driver survived but was critically injured. So, get out of your car. It's one of the most dangerous places you can be. It's a hell of a one that's fixing to come down. It looks like over there, don't it? This is home video of a storm system that spawned a tornado that struck the town of Wiley, a suburb of Dallas, Texas, on Mother's Day in May of 1993. That's too close for comfort there, Richard. <laughs> the photographer was able to videotape the tornado from the time the funnel first began to drop from the clouds. It's coming on down. <laughs> we then see it take shape and finally touch down as a dangerous and destructive twister. There it is. Man, that is a hell of a tornado. I just hope it don't come this way. One person was killed. 60 were injured. Damage was estimated to be in the millions. Many homes and businesses were hit, including this mobile home park. Well, I was standing there watching out the window, watching the trees lay like, straight over. We just got on top of the children oh and got in the hallway, and we were just on top of them. It was already gone by us by that time. Do you know which one's your, your home and which one? Well, my mama's, it was 
that, and it's now here, and up there, and all around. Those are the flowers I gave my mama for Mother's Day, and they would they survived in the vase. <laughs> Had to be a sign from God. Because they are not anchored to the ground with a foundation, mobile homes can be picked up and tossed around by a tornado just as cars can. They can easily collapse, endangering the lives of anyone trapped or seeking shelter inside. Well, we got to the house. There ain't nothing left of it. And yeah, I, was I pulled, I pulled two of them out of that wreckage over there, man. We pulled that one boy out. He was covered in stuff. And it's just we got that on him. ham port over the house. Bubba's room is gone. His gone, period. Yeah. Yeah. Some didn't vary so good. Some of us did. Yeah. That's yeah. awful. We were lucky. They just took a little bit off our roof and broke one window. Everything else is still intact. The one fatality from the Wiley tornado was a man who was killed when the mobile home he was in was lifted up and thrown onto the trailer next door. He died? He died? The storm picked it up and trapped uh, the man in the home. His wife and daughters were out doing some Mother's Day activities. Uh, friends had thought they had secured everybody in the area, but later found out they hadn't, so he was trapped in the house. Normally when a tornado comes through, you hear like trains or something like that. We didn't hear nothing. All of a sudden, the, the house started to rock a little bit. I started to scream and was looking for my three-month-old grandbaby, and I grabbed her, and we just went in. We were going to get in the tub, and we didn't get there, thank God, because that trailer's sitting in my tub right now. I, it just happened. I mean, just wham, there it was. And then I came outside, and that house was sitting on top, and that guy died in there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Our third tip for tornado safety. If you're in a mobile home and have warning that a tornado is imminent, get out and seek shelter in some place where you won't be exposed to flying wood and metal. Seek a ditch, a bridge, or some structure sound enough to provide some protection. You should consider being in a mobile home to be no safer than being in a car when it comes to surviving a tornado. But what if you're in a solid house or an office building when a tornado hits? Uh, you can see it coming over the lake now. Bob Goodry was outside his lake house in Minnesota when he spotted a tornado forming. Look at the trees by the highway. Right, look at there. Look at the highway trees. Oh, the power line just went out. Power line just went out. Look at them. Oh, power lines. I'm getting every power line out. Cool. Oh, your okay. boat. It's very rough. Look at it. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's right out here. I think you can come right here. You saw all the power lines going out. Here it is. Okay. Here it is. It's going right out across. You can right see the across, stuff flying. Right across. You this. can see the stuff flying. What, what bay is it? Look at this. Look at it. Oh! Yeah! You can oh! see it. You can see it. It is totally incredible. This is so sweet. So they get a little more. It's coming up behind it. His home video highlights the danger a tornado can pose, even when the person takes shelter inside a house. Oh, there goes Bob's boat. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Get away from the windows! Oh. Get away from the windows! Tree just blew over. Wow, look at the tree over. Look at that Get away from the windows! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Where's everybody? One of the greatest dangers from a tornado comes from flying glass and other debris. Even the outside walls of a sturdy house may not be protection enough from the powerful winds of a tornado. To see how powerful the tornado can be, we visited a lab at Texas Tech University. Engineers load a 2x4 into an air gun. They fire it at 115 miles per hour at a wall to see what happens. It doesn't matter whether it's wood, brick, or cinder block, it goes right through. Yep, there you are. It's like 
uh, your living room with Dan. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's a typical wall set yeah. section. At Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, scientists are taking a different approach to learning about the power of tornadoes. You go ahead and get things uh, fired up. Dr. John Snow is in charge of the project. Okay. It's called the Purdue University Vortex Chamber. What we're trying to do is to simulate tornadoes. And we mean the word simulate in a very strict sense. We've got everything arranged so that really what we're doing is modeling part of the thunderstorm updraft so that the tornadoes that form are really scale models in all senses of the word of the real world event you see in nature. The tornado is really the sideshow to the thunderstorm. Now it's a very important sideshow because it's down here among those folks. But the real key to producing a tornado either in nature or in the laboratory is to put together the right amount of through flow where the air is coming in and the right amount of spin which is present in the air and then concentrate. Nature does that relatively easily so that all thunderstorms rotate a little bit. But every once in a while, it concentrates a lot, produces a tornado. Here in the lab, we have a bit more control of things, and we can do that over and over again by using a series of vanes and a big fan to draw air through, and we can produce small model tornadoes in a, in a controllable manner. The object is to learn just how fast winds in a tornado are. Dr. Snow, who designed the system, has placed measuring devices underneath the chamber to look up into the tornado. One of the devices shoots a laser beam into the vortex of the miniature tornado. It bounces off dust particles and droplets of water and tells the computer wind speeds inside. We think, because no one has actually measured it yet in the real tornado, that the maximum possible wind speed in a tornado is a little over 300 miles per hour. Luckily, that speed probably only happens a few times a year, 10 or 20 times a year out of the thousand or so tornadoes that occur in the U.S. Most tornadoes have wind speeds much less than that, probably in the neighborhood 150 miles an hour. Stay away from the window. The creek is cool. As these people discovered, winds generated by a tornado can easily topple trees and shatter windows and should be taken seriously. Where is, it? Where is everybody? Our fourth tip for tornado safety. Even if you're inside a house or an office building, don't assume you're safe. As you've just seen, even the outer walls of your house are not protection from winds of up to 300 miles per hour. And there's a tremendous danger from shattered glass. So head to the center of your house. Get into a bathroom if you can. Bathrooms are good shelter because there are pipes there that can block flying debris. And take a blanket, or even better, if you have time, a mattress to cover yourself and your family. If not a bathroom, get into a closet. The wood framing around a closet can also block some projectiles. If you're in an office building, get away from the windows. Go to the middle of the building. Get under a bench, a table, or anything that can protect you from flying glass and metal. If you're in a church, a school, a shopping mall, or any other public place, the same rules apply. Get into the center of the structure, away from windows and outside walls. A stairwell's a good place, so is a bathroom. It's hard to learn about tornadoes. Not only do they come and go suddenly, they also move around a lot. So it's been left up to adventurous men and women to check tornadoes out, up close and personal, you might say. These folks call themselves storm chasers and they take to the road to capture valuable scientific information to enhance our knowledge about tornadoes. One such fellow is Tim Marshall. I think it looks pretty good for today. Uh, there's going to be tornadoes today. I just think that uh, we need to get there, and we need to have some luck today to, uh, in order to see them. For Tim Marshall, the chase starts indoors, and he's well prepared. He's a meteorologist with graduate degrees in atmospheric science and civil engineering. We'll pull up Stephenville to see how thick the low-level moisture is. One month a year, he takes off from his engineering job to pursue the elusive tornado. The search begins at Tim's house north of Dallas. Today, he may go west to the Texas Panhandle, or he might go due north to Oklahoma or Kansas. He figures even with potential storms developing, 
His chances of seeing a tornado are at best one in ten. Uh, I've got a walk and talk, a fair walk and talk for you. Okay. That this is going to be on the channel today. We had a storm that. Uh, Tim Marshall's chase partner is Carson Eve. He's a ham radio operator. There are others along on this trip, too, hoping to witness what many fear nature at its fiercest. All right, we're ready. The National Severe Storm Forecast Center has issued a tornado watch for portions of southern and central Nebraska and portions of central and northern. Right now, the van is a roaming weather service office. Well, by having a laptop computer, we don't have to bother the weather service anymore. What we can do is get information right on our own, anytime, anywhere. Hooks through a cell phone and the beauty of a laptop computer and a modem. Receiving data from three states, Tim plots it on a weather map. Now watch all this. There's our weather data. Boom. Right there. Oh, it looks pretty good. Look at the, uh, right in here, we have this little punch here coming in here. Looks like we're heading in the right direction. It's looking like the severe weather may extend farther south than they expected. And you'll see a very sharp boundary in green here where the dew, the dew points are. That's where the dry line is. That's a boundary between the dry air to the west and the moist air to the east. And that boundary is a focal point for severe thunderstorm formation. And that's what we want to get to. We want to get to that dry line. The bottom line on this is that we need to get our butt west. <laughs> that's it. We need to get out there. But all the computers and cellular phones won't predict exactly where a storm will form, or if a tornado will form at all. We're not ever going to be able to predict exactly where a storm is going to form. We just don't have that capability right now. Five years ago, chasers like Tim Marshall didn't have this technology. They'd follow storms visually. Now their cellular phones and computers may be about to pay off. There's a CB to our north. Near Canadian Texas, they make a decision to go west. Approaching the town of Spearman in the Texas Panhandle, they confront a telltale anvil cloud. That's a flanking line that is the feeder band for the thunderstorm, so that's pretty good. Wow. It's still a flat base, so we'll have to keep an eye on it, but it's looking good. It's really looking good there. Look at how cumuliform and how rock hard that anvil is up there. But note the relative cloud movement. The low clouds are moving left to right. The upper cloud is moving from, from west to east. So we have a, a 90 degree turning there, the rotation that we need for uh, a tornado or for a, a severe thunderstorm. It's there. It just has to now wind up and do it. Oh, this is incredible. What an incredible storm. What Tim and his fellow chasers have found is a thunderstorm with all the right elements to make a tornado. All right, let's turn this baby around and get going. Now the chase is really on. That one in ten chance may be about to pay off. Oh my goodness, look at how big that tornado is. That is a giant tornado. Very large, cone-shaped tornado on the ground, turning through the countryside. Darn, just off in the haze. Oh, gee whiz. Come on, get away from it, Ray. Get away from it. Very large tornado now on the ground. I've got to take some stills here of this. Tim and his caravan will chase this tornado northeastward into Oklahoma. It's a powerful twister, fortunately not near a populated area. It's somewhat hard to see because it's picking up so much dust. Extremely large tornado now, very large. We're going to have to get going, gentlemen, because the contrast is getting just so bad. We're going to have to drive with the tornado on the ground. Yeah, get going, Jeff. It's not long before another tornado forms. It's not on the ground yet. East wind, very strong. Tornado on the ground. Time 7:19. Follow us, lifting slightly. 
going to come down again. Coming down again is a small two. Coming down again, tornado. All right, all right, all right. All right, very nice. This one is moving fast. Taking pictures. Very nice, picturesque tornado up there. contrast this time. All right, gentlemen, let's get going. Let's go north. For the chasers, the best part is over. They'll continue looking for tornadoes for several more days. But today's catch is as good as it will get. What you saw today was an extremely rare thing. I mean, I'm at this time and time again, and I'll, go, I'll do 10,000 miles of spring, and if I'm lucky, I see one. So what we saw today was a truly rare event. The reason why you see so many tornado videos is that just about everybody has a video camera. The, the challenge is trying to get yourself there for that few seconds that it's on the ground. Well, we might as well come here and watch a nice sunset. This is a hunt, if you will. And you have to know something about the animal that you're chasing, that you're actually tracking. And so you have to know its movements, you have to know how that animal is behaving, and you have to know what to do in a tight spot. Just in case you ever get into trouble, you have to always have an escape route to get out of the way. Well, the end of a chase, what can I say? Not bad. We should point out right now that you should not try to chase a tornado. It's exciting for the chasers, we've shown you that. But as you've also seen, they have years of training and experience. They know exactly what to do when a tornado appears on the horizon. They have a plan of action. So our fifth tip is that you too should have a plan of action if you're warned a tornado is imminent. Get with your family and make sure you all know where to go and what to do if a tornado comes your way. A few minutes of preparation could be crucial in an emergency. Every member of your family should be familiar with the survival tips we've shown you. Everyone should know which parts of your house would be the best shelter from a tornado. We're going to have an interesting situation forming up here. It's a high risk day. Looks like all the parameters are coming together for a big tornado day. In April of 1991, Tim Marshall was chasing tornadoes in Kansas when he came across a storm system that would spawn a deadly family of tornadoes. Tornado. The first sign that we could see of this tornado forming was from the cloud. This, this formed first from the cloud down. And you can see here that it's a, a funnel that's just dipping on down. And this tornado bends and has all kinds of different shapes on it. Tornado on the ground. Marshall followed this system as it moved across the state. And we're driving through Clearwater, Kansas right now, and it's dead calm. The air is still, it's very muggy. All right, I see it, I see it. Okay, come on now, punch it, punch it. And then looming out on the horizon, the tornado. There it is. I mean, it's just a low-hanging cloud. Turn a little bit this way. Turn a little bit this way. Or just a white, low-hanging cloud. But we're keyed in on it, watching it click carefully, and you'll start to see it uh, extending down a little more. Now it's kind of kind of uh, elephant trunk look to it. This tornado now is moving toward a couple of houses on the road here. Hey, I take some pictures, Carson. That's good. And uh, as it crosses that road, uh, one of the roofs of the house blows off. Oh, yeah, look at the debris. Oh, it hit it, hit it. We felt that this tornado was going to die out in a couple of minutes. It was thin, a ropey tornado. Now, the average tornado only lasts a few minutes. But then I don't know what happened. Something happened in, in the sky, and I have never been able to explain it yet. Maybe one day we'll know, is that this storm decides to go crazy. McConnell Air Force Base, just south of Wichita, caught the tornado on videotape as it tore through a base parking lot. A 
resident took these pictures of the funnel as it hit the town of Andover. Thirteen people were killed as the tornado ripped through a mobile home park. In all, 20 people would lose their lives. Tim Marshall surveyed the damage. We got there just after the tornado happened. There were houses that were leveled all over. There were people walking around in a daze after that. What was interesting to me was, if you look closely at this tape uh, and look closely at the foundation, this, this, this is where I'd become uh, an engineer here. To become an engineer. Look at the bottom here. This house was not anchored very well at all. I mean, the, the walls were not anchored at all to the floor. So. And uh, so that was easy for the tornado to sweep it out. And look how a roof just flipped right on over. I mean, a lot of the roofs weren't even tied down to the walls. We make it easy for Mother Nature to do its damage a lot of times when we don't build houses uh, better and uh, make sure things are tied down. Our final tip for tornado safety is for people who are building a new home. Have the builder tie or strap the roof to the wall. A simple metal clip can reinforce the connection between the roof and the wall, making your house much more structurally sound. And be sure the frame of your house is securely anchored to the foundation with concrete bolts and washers. These simple and inexpensive steps can strengthen your home and provide added protection for you and your family if you're inside. In spite of all the studies and all the information gathered about tornadoes through the years, the tornado remains one of the most unpredictable mysteries of nature. But you can increase your chances of coming out of an encounter with a tornado unhurt by following a few simple rules. First, have a plan of action for seeking shelter in a tornado. Make sure everyone in your family knows what to do and where to go if a tornado is imminent. Pay attention to radio and TV during impending severe weather. If you live in Tornado Alley, it's a good idea to have a weather radio and keep it handy during tornado season. And remember that a tornado watch means to watch out and be alert to the possibility of developing tornadoes over the next few hours. But a tornado warning means act now. A tornado has either been sighted or Doppler radar is showing signs of a tornado developing. So get to a safe place as soon as you can. If you're in a car, don't try to outrun a tornado. Get out of your car and seek shelter immediately. If you can, get under an overpass. If there's no overpass nearby, lie in a ditch. If there's no ditch, get to the lowest possible spot and cover your head with your arm. The same applies to a mobile home. If you're in a mobile home, get out and seek shelter. A mobile home is no safer than a car. If you're in a house or a public building, stay away from windows and outside walls. Go to a reinforced central space like a stairwell, a closet, or a bathroom. And if you're building a home, Make sure your builder ties the roof to the walls and anchors the walls to the foundation. We've made great strides in forecasting tornadoes, but no matter how sophisticated a warning system is, the ultimate responsibility is ours, to be alert to watches and warnings, and take steps quickly to save lives, both ours and those we love. Tornado Alert. What you need to know is made possible in part by Phillips Petroleum the performance company, and by Central and Southwest Corporation, an energy company for today and tomorrow.